In this presentation, we will take a look at the federal unemployment tax and state unemployment tax within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our test file. You can follow along in your own business file and or take a look at the free test file that Intuit provides, QuickBooks provides by searching within the browser, QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're going to go down to the Workers tab on the left side and we're going to be in the Employees tab up top considering our three employees. When we consider the federal unemployment tax, it will be something that will be set up by the default settings as we set up the paid payrolls. Therefore, the setup process of which accounts will be affected and how to go through the calculations will be fairly straightforward. However, we note that the federal unemployment tax is tied to in some regard to the state unemployment tax. And therefore, we want to make sure that we enter whatever state we are in the state unemployment tax correctly. It will change by region from region to region. Once we have that information, the focus that we have, the federal unemployment tax, then once we have a state settled, will typically be the same for the entire country, all the United States. So we need the state information because that's part of the law that affects the federal tax. But as long as we are in a region that complies with the state tax, most areas in the country, then the federal unemployment tax will be straightforward and then standardized. The rules for the federal unemployment tax will be the same for our employees. And we don't have the same kind of issue with regard to the earnings that we saw with other types of taxes where we had the bonus earnings for the Medicare or the Social Security, which has the cap. However, there is still a cap with the federal unemployment tax. It just happens to be a very low cap. And therefore, unlike the Social Security cap, it's one where just about everybody will hit it. And therefore, the federal unemployment tax for that reason and for the reason that it's an employer only tax and therefore employees don't see it we don't see it on our w-2 it's a it's a tax that most people don't understand very well it's also a bit confusing simply because it's tied to at least from a legislation purpose to the state tax in some ways once we have the payroll set up it's fairly straightforward to enter the data for a new employee for the futa tax because the futa tax will in essence be applied and standardized for all employees and it will in essence be the employee having a flat tax rate for the employer tax up to a cap which will be applied to all employees so it's going to be standardized in terms of the data we need to enter for new employees that's not the confusing thing about the federal unemployment tax really the confusing thing is just knowing what the system will do even though the rules are standardized to consider that Let's go over to a paycheck by going to our accounting on the left side. We're then going to go into our checking account. If you have your payroll out of some other account, then you can go into your payroll account. We're going to view the check register or the register. These are all paychecks. We're going to look at a paycheck. I'm going to go down to the first quarter of the paychecks. The first quarter paycheck will differ greatly than later paychecks. And that's really the confusing thing. We understand the rule then we'll understand why that is the case. Otherwise, when we look at federal unemployment tax, when we look at FUTA, it will confuse us as we go from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So let's look at Anthony's first paycheck. If we go to Anthony here's first paycheck and we edit that information, we're going to go down and look through the check amount, 4062 Now the cap is around 7000 I believe it's 7000 This is the first paycheck, so of course this employee hasn't hit the cap at this time, but is close because we're paying monthly. This, this employee earns $25 an hour, so it's not a high income earner, but still clearly will hit the cap very soon in the next paycheck, most likely. If we consider, so this is going to be the gross pay, the employee taxes, you'll see that FUTA tax is not here. And that's because the federal unemployment tax is not an employee tax. It's not coming out of the net check. The state unemployment tax could differ from state to state. There may be a state portion to it, but it will also have an employer portion. We won't get too much into detail on the state tax other than to note that we typically need some type of SUTA tax in the state for the FUTA tax to be kind of standardized for the entire country. So in any case, the employee taxes doesn't show FUTA. That's why most people aren't very aware of it. We're not very familiar with it because 
we don't see it in our paycheck stubs or in our W-2. It's going to be down here in the employer side. And then here's going to be the, the uh, FUTA tax. Notice the amount is not that high as well. We got the 2438, but it is something that we as the employer have to track and calculate over and above the net pay. It's being paid over and above the net pay. In other words, the employee is earning this 4,062 We have to pay that amount above over this amount, not taking it out of this amount. Uh, and that's why it's an employer tax. That's why it's an, a payroll tax as opposed to something that the employee ba pays. So if we were to take the rate then, if we took this 4062, 4062.5 times 0 0.006, I believe is the rate, and that'll give us the 24.37. And if we round that, we're gonna get the 24.38. So it's a flat tax, easy to calculate, which is nice. The problem is, however, that we're gonna hit that cap. And once we hit the cap, then we're not gonna see the tax anymore. It'll stop at the point that we see that cap. So let's see that if we close this back out and we go back to our accounting tab and we're going to go back to our checking account and we're going to scroll down. We saw Anthony's for, the, for January. So this is January check for Anthony. Now we're going to go to Anthony's check for February and see what it looks like if we edit the check for February and we say uh, that we want to see the detail, same amount of gross pay. But if we go down to the FUTA, notice it's lower. Why is it lower? Because they hit the cap. Uh, so you'll note that the two checks were the same. So there's a cap of 7,000 minus the 4062.5. So only 2,937 of this 4,062.50 is subject to the FUTA. So that times the rate, which is 0 0.006, gives us that 17. 0.62 rounded about so that's going to hit the cap there and if we go back up top then and we close this back out and we look at the, ch the third check for anthony and go to accounting and we're going to say okay let's go to our check register our checking account and we looked at first check for the first month and then anthony's second check we looked at and now let's look at anthony's third check so here's anthony's third check and we edit that item to see what it looks like and we will see that uh, if same amount of gross pay, but now the FUTA is zero. So again, if you, if you don't notice what's going on, that's going to be confusing, of course. And the, the employee has no idea because it's not on their paycheck. So it doesn't affect their net pay. So it's not something that many people really focus in on. And when they do see it, when we start to process it, uh, then it can be confusing. And we only really think about it how closely at the end of the year, maybe, when either we're paying the amount of FUTA or we're looking at the 940, which has to be reported not quarterly, but yearly. So then we'll close this back out and let's take a look at one other paycheck. If we go to accounting and we're going to go to our checking account and let's look at our big earner now, which is Judy Jones. Here's Judy Jones, January paycheck. She made 21,852. So she's clearly hit the cap on one paycheck. So if we edit that item, we see that we have this amount. Uh, I'm sorry, that, that was the net. Yeah, this is the gross pay, 41. And if we scroll down, we're going to say how much was taken out? Only $42. $42 was taken out of the gross pay being over, you know, around 42,000. Why is that? Because the cap is 7,000. So it's 7,000 times 0 0.062. She hit the cap on her first paycheck. So let's do that again. Seven thousand times 0 0.006 and so she hit that on her first paycheck so she only got 42 dollars pulled out so notice it's the same concept of a cap that we saw in social security but the cap on social security is something that most don't hit and most employees don't get to because it's it's over a hundred thousand so only employees that are making over a hundred thousand will hit that this cap almost everybody will hit we saw anthony making 25 dollars an hour will hit it and this uh high earner hit it on the first payroll. Therefore, we will see this calculation of FUTA on the, uh, in the first quarter, and it'll kind of disappear typically towards the end of the year. Let's close this back out. Let's take a look at some reports. If we take a look at the reports, we're going to take a look at our balance sheet and income statement, selecting the balance sheet first. We'll change the dates up top from 010119 to 1231119 and run that report. 
we'll see the liabilities down here. Now, this is not something we took from the employees. It's an employer portion, and it's not included in the 941, which includes FIT, federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare, but in this 940. That's where we report it. So these two forms sound really similar, but because they're similar numbers. But the 940, we only generally uh, have to process annually at the end of the year, and it's applied specifically to the federal tax of unemployment. So these two are going to be all, these are all federal taxes too, FIT, federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare, but they broke out unemployment separately and gave us the benefit of only having to calculate that or, you know, report it once a year rather than every quarter. So here's the liability. It's not taken out of the check, but it's a separate item. So let's take a look at the income statement, the other side. We're going to duplicate this tab up top by right-clicking it, duplicating it, pulling the tab from the left to the right, then going down to the reports. We're going to go to the profit and loss report, change the dates up top from 010119 to 123119, and run that report. And then we'll scroll down. It's not going to be in the wages tab. As we saw before, with FIT, Social Security, and Medicare, there was FIT, all of it was in wages because it's included in the gross pay. Social Security and Medicare had a wages portion included that was taken out of, it was included in gross pay. And then it had a, a, ta a taxes portion, which was paid by the employer. This one is all taxes. So if we break out these two items, this is one that is only an employer tax. It's purely a payroll tax from the sense of an employer payroll taxes that we're paying over and above the gross pay that we owe to the employees is part of FUTA. So we're paying this over and above. If we select this item, then these items here include the paychecks and include the portion for payroll taxes or employer taxes, including the FUTA taxes. So if we scroll back up, we can go back up top. Again, if we wanted to change this taxes and say, hey, I don't want a taxes broken out. I just want one payroll expense item or something like that. We could go to the cog up top and change the settings to say, hey, I just want all the taxes to be grouped in uh, in just payroll, a uh, payroll account so that we don't break out taxes and uh, payroll. But breaking them out separately like this is nice at the end of the year when we want to reconcile the taxes versus the wages to the 941s and the 940 and the W2 and the W3 and all that great stuff. It's nice to have those, those two broken out at that point. We're going to make another tab. I'm going to right click on the tab up top. We'll duplicate that tab again. We'll pull the one from the left to the right. And now we're in the duplicated tab. We're going to see where the 940 report would be made if we go down to the taxes tab on the left. These, they're not quarterlies. The FUTA tax isn't in, is not included in the quarterlies 941. It's only reported annually. And you might ask, well, why would that be? And it's, and it's basically, I would think, the justification, I'm guessing here, but the justification is that it's not as high a, a money amount. It's more tedious for us to calculate this every quarter because this is just an information report. So because this is a lower dollar amount, the IRS is nice enough to say, hey, we'll just we won't make you report that every quarter. We'll make you do it at the end of the year, kind of like we do with our income taxes with Form 1040. So that's, here's the annual report then. We would then be looking at usually the Form 940. It's going to be on the 940 report, and we process this report. Because it's early in the year, we can't show you basically an example for 2019, but this is the area where it will be at the end of the year. That's kind of one of the restrictions of having uh, an example problem for the entire year uh, in something like QuickBooks Online. Note it won't be on the W-2 or the W-3 because those two re reflect the employee taxes and this is an employer taxes. So it's it's not going to be reflected there. It will be shown. You could see it, of course, on reports and payroll reports. We could go down to the payroll reports down here and look at some of them. I'll look at the payroll details. And if you consider the payroll detail reports, uh, we'll run it for the first quarter, so we'll take a look at this for January through March, and we will run that report, and we'll consider where the food attacks is. Notice it's all the way to the right because it's a food attacks. If I go down, the, the most current paychecks are at the bottom of this report, so if we go down, here's the January. It's going to be in the right. Here's going to be the food attacks. For this is one paycheck for Best Smith's first paycheck. This is the gross pay, the OT. 
And then there's the food tax, not being taken out of the check, not being included in the calculation from the gross check, these two items, to the net check, but being paid over and above. So here's Beth, here's Anthony uh, that has that first check in January as well. Here's the FUTA. Here's Judy Jones, the first check, a much bigger check, of course, uh, in January. And then here's the FUTA. And then we have Beth, second check. Now we're in February. Futa's lower because she already hit the cap of 7,000. Then we have Anthony, same thing. And then we have Judy Jones, no Futa on the second check because she already hit the cap and it's only the first quarter. And then if we go to Beth on the third check, we don't have any Futa at all. And if we go to Anthony, no Futa at all. If we scroll back down and look at the total then, the total data for FUTA 126, not a big number. And so it, it can be another reason why people don't you know, notice it a lot. But then if we go to the second quarter, it's going to go away pretty much completely because all three employees, even the ones that are at a lower wage, have already hit the FUTA. So therefore, we're going to see something like FUTA calculations in the first quarter, and then we'll see it basically drop off dramatically after the first quarter so when you go to the end of year reporting and then go back into january for the following year this thing will just pop up you'll say ah there's uh, what is this thing popped up i haven't seen it for like three quarters here i haven't I haven't dealt with it unless we had a new employee so if you have a new employee that you bring in at the end of the year then quick you'll see this futa will pop up as an employer tax you know like, ah there's where did that come from i haven't seen it for months why because it, it, there's that low cap of the seven thousand so not, not a difficult thing to understand once you, once you understand it. Very nice for QuickBooks to be able to calculate this for us because uh, the, the rule's not that difficult. But again, when does it happen? When does each employee hit the cap? We have to make sure we got the right paycheck and the, the difference between that and when we hit the cap. Uh, QuickBooks can help us with that calculation. We just need to know what it's doing so we can explain it to ourselves and others. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.